Welcome to a very special five on five between uh, state Senate candidates for Jackson County State Senate seat. We're talking with Republican Jessica Gomez and Democrat Jeff Golden. Thank you both so much for being here today. Thanks yeah. for having us in. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna try and cover as many topics as we can, uh, about a minute each. And if you guys hit hit your limits, I, I will uh, kind of prompt you to, to wrap up, please. But uh, again, this is uh, very exciting, and, and thank you for being here. Um, Jessica, we'll start with you. Uh, sure. You're closer, as we decided. So uh, what's your top priority for Oregon's rural economy and its timeline? You know, I think that education is so important, especially for rural Oregon. We've got to get kids back engaged. Our graduation rates are not what they should be, and our area deserves an excellent education system. Working on career and technical education uh, really has the power to help kids stay engaged and get into a career track that that really um, can be a lifetime of success for people. Okay, Jeff? Well, we've got twin problems. We've got some environmental issues which showed up in the smoke this year, and we've got to immediately expand our fuel reduction in the woods and, uh, and get serious about climate action along with the rest of the West Coast states. And then we've got this nest of social problems that relate to each other. It's housing and education and substance abuse and and that is going to take some investment. Uh, there are plenty of ideas out there for housing, for example. Right now, the, the state preempts local governments from trying different things. We need to, I'd like to reverse that in the very first session. And then we, I think we need to develop resources, marshal the resources we have well, and develop resources to really invest in the problems that cause homelessness and large class sizes and mental health problems. I think we've disinvested, and we have to reverse that. Okay, I want to I start with you on the question. We'll, again, go back and forth. So several different studies in the last uh, couple of years have, have panned Oregon uh, for its treatment of, of the mentally ill. Uh, what will you do if elected to help those who are most vulnerable? Well, one thing we've got going for us is a network of community-based organizations that are very low budget, very volunteer-based, but are doing some amazing work with uh, people with mental health challenges. And in that, I would put NAMI, uh, National Association of Mental Illness, very strong chapters in Oregon. Compass House near, here in Oregon. I want to help them, and I also think that you know we need to work with the coordinated care organizations to continue to build what they're doing in whole patient care to bring in more mental health services and to get back into the schools in the early grades where we pretty well stripped out mental health counseling and professionals, and that will take investment. Okay, helping the mentally ill. Yeah, so there are some big challenges with this, especially with the way that we uh, pay for mental health professionals, right? In a lot of cases, they fall under the OHP system, our co coordinated care system, and we've got a structure that actually prevents us from paying appropriate wages to people in mental health uh, that are providing those services. And so if we want to attract those folks and have the resources in order to deliver care, we've got to work on that. I think uh, moving professionals uh, that are working in their schools and moving them over to the CCO uh, system is going to be really important. Right now they're paid for out of school budgets um, along with school nurses and, and wrapping the C that into the CCO structure as opposed to having come out of our education budget is going to be really important. And then telecare, right? Working with people via Skype, providing more options. Because we have people that are in rural areas that have a hard time getting to resources. I think if we can connect to those things and do a better job at providing sort of resources to people, we'll be in good shape. What about homelessness, uh, Jessica, for you? Uh, how would you address uh, specifically homeless youth and, and be as specific as possible is how you would help this problem? Yeah, so you talk about homeless. There's a few different uh, issues that come into play. Uh, we have a big challenge when it comes to addiction and mental health. Sometimes those things are co-occurring. So if we really want to make a dent in homelessness, we've got to start with addiction uh, services and getting people mentally healthy and preventing uh, people from getting into a point where they're in a situation where they're living off the Greenway, um, off of those trails. And I've been in there and talked to people that are living under tarps, and they're there for very different reasons. Each person has an individual story. Uh, and then you go and peek up underneath 
beneath the overpasses and you see what's happening. It's absolutely devastating and heart-wrenching to see that happen in our community. But we have to do better with addressing the problems where they start. Uh, again, addiction and mental health services are going to be a big deal here. Housing is another component, right? We've lost um, a lot of the uh, housing options for people, and it's just because we're growing. We have a lot of people that want to be in Southern Oregon. It's a beautiful place to live. Um, and yet we are struggling to provide enough options for people. We have about a one and a half percent vacancy rate. Healthy is four. Okay. All right, Jeff, uh, how would you uh, help the homeless issue? So here we have a short-term immediate emergency problem. We've got an estimated 2,500 homeless children in our county of 215,000 people, just staggering. And we've got a longer-term problem. What causes homelessness? What, is the, what are the obstacles to people being able to afford homes? So in the short term, I'm going to go again to some of the really good work community groups are doing, like Hope Village and Medford, the tiny home villages, which are starting to take off, and which involves sort of a caseworker approach where these people are addressed with a lot of their needs, where they can eventually uh, move into some subsidized and maybe unsubsidized housing. Um, there are uh, different cities are looking at loosening codes to allow you know, more dwelling units. But again, and then in the long term, you know, we're talking again about uh, uh, addiction problems, education challenges. We have to make those investments long term if we're not going to be fighting this from the back end year after year. So we are at a place where we're both needing to do triage and then get upstream and do prevention. Okay. We're going to take a quick break, give you guys a moment, and we're going to come back and answer sure. some more questions. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our extended five on five decision 2018, a uh, mini debate, if you will, between state Senate candidates, Jessica Gomez and uh, Jeff Golden, uh, Republican and Democrat, respectively. So, uh, Jeff, you, you get our next question. Um, despite being a huge part of the state's budget, uh, Oregon's education system is failing. How are you going to fix that? Well, again, we need investment. We need to also I'm I'm actually more interested in some people in my party in what charter schools are doing and the innovations that are coming forward, because it is hard for the, the uh, uh, bureaucracy the size of state education to innovate. It's a slow-moving ship. So we have to do some of that. I think we have to invest in pre-K. Most, not most states, a number of states have universal pre-K, and it turns out to be about the best investment down the road that they can make. So that's part of it. And part of it is you can't tease this apart from the other issues we've been talking about because if we don't address substance abuse and homelessness, we are sending the kids, kids to school unable to learn and often disruptive. You talk to teachers who are clearing classrooms. So taking care of those base, basics is important. Uh, finding incentive programs that reward uh, performance on the school level. Continuing some of the career to work and measure 98 measures to uh, increase graduation rates. That's all essential. Okay, and, and Jessica, how will you uh, work to fix education in Oregon? Yeah, so what I'd like to say is it's not just about the money. We are in the top 20% in our spending. It's where those dollars go and how you allocate them back into the classroom to do the work that we need to do. Uh, we have, our teachers are struggling, they're extra stressed. We're expecting them to be the social worker, the parent, uh, the educator, the disciplinarian. Uh, and it's really stressing the system. So we need parents also to step up and help set some of the expectations for their children. We talk about charter school and private school and why those schools do better than our public system. And in many ways, it's because of the conscious decision from the parent to be involved in that child's education system. Uh, uh, the education life cycle, right? We need from cradle to career um, to have a streamlined process where we can keep kids engaged. Um, we talk about funding. Uh, the targeted Measure 98 money has done a tremendous job here locally. So starting in January, kids in uh, Medford School District will have the ability to go to community college starting their junior year if they can pass that entrance exam. And they'll graduate high school with a two-year degree from community college. It's absolutely amazing. So those are the things that we can do better and be more innovative around. Okay. Um, our, our next question for you is, uh, what is your biggest advantage over your opponent in this race? You know, I'm a business owner. I spent a lot of time working on uh, commissions and boards. Um, I have kids in the school district. 
you know, I am really looking at making strategic changes. And again, it's not just about the money, it's how you apply it. Just throwing money at a problem doesn't solve it. You have to really work through those systemic issues if you want those dollars to be impactful. So if you look at our state budget, we are $73.4 billion. We spend 41% of that on human services, which means we have tremendous need. We have to shift that to a place where people are actively working and working is always in that positive for people so that we have more taxpayers. We need a broader tax base, not less people pay more taxes. And I think that's a, a shift in how we think about building a healthier and prosperous state. Okay, Jeff, your biggest advantage. I think it's place? true that you don't solve, solve problems just by throwing money at it. And I think some of the criticism of the way public dollars have been spent in this state is legitimate. So my belief, we, I keep using the word investment, I've heard uh, Jessica do that too. My belief is that doing it right, getting ahead of these problems, which have been neglected for a long time, is going to take both reevaluating state spending now and finding dollars that are not being spent well. And they are there, but that's not going to be enough. And, and I think, um, I, I don't think we're being sincere with voters if we say we're going to get our arms around all these problems, but we're not going to ask any more of you. In terms of advantages, you know, I've been in politics and media and journalism for now 35 years, spent time on staff in the legislature, which is where I learned how paralyzing the impact of big special interest money is. And it's not just one party where that's true. It's why I've insisted on running without PAC money in this election. I think that's essential. I think we need more and more people in office who are not thinking before a big vote, what will my big funders think of this? I think that's important. I've done policy analysis as a journalist for a long time. I think I've shown, yeah, as a county commissioner and other places, that I'm willing to stand up to the heat, whichever party it's coming from, and we're not going to solve our problems without more legislators like that. Okay, this will be our last question, Jeff. It'll, it'll start with you. Recent legislative sessions have addressed a disconnect with, with legislative leadership in, in addressing serious long-term concerns. What can be done to change that? Would you ask that again? I'm not yeah, quite sure. sure where so, that goes so we're to. looking. Legislature um, may may not be as forward uh, long term thinking uh -huh. um, as as some might might like to see. What can be done to change? Well, that? that's a national problem. That's not an Oregon problem. That's a national problem, including Oregon. And we reward short term uh, gains, and we don't. Again, this gets back to what I was saying before. I wrote a book called "As If We Were Grown Ups," and the main premise is that our politics is designed to appeal to the spoiled child in us instead of the adult who realizes changes take time, they take investment, it's not all a rose garden. And, and so I think, I think we have to look to voters really to say, will you put people in positions of power who don't promise you a rose garden, but give you a balanced picture of what they can do in office and what your responsibilities as a citizen is. Okay, how do we uh, get the legislature to look more forward, Jessica? You know, I think we need to go back to what is the role of state and federal government and how does that impact our lives? So you think about that role and think infrastructure, education, um, managing public safety, and I think we need to get back to that and look at what are the what does that role really look like and how do we allocate dollars effectively? We saw the breakdown of that system when we when we look at PERS, right? We have a huge amount of debt um, having to do with paying out PERS benefits, and it's been very, very unhealthy for, for our state, and it's traced back to decisions that we made for a really long time ago. So what do we do about that now? I've got a strategy for uh, an opt-in program to buy out retirement benefits. So you have a finite dollar amount. If the person who's already retired decides to opt in, they can opt in. Um, we would take that known debt and re amortize it over a longer period of time. We're gonna to have to get creative about how we solve these problems. And again, it's not about just raising more revenue. We've, our state has had more revenue in the last two bienniums than we've ever seen before, and yet it seems like it's never enough. Okay. We've got to fix that. All right, well, thank you both so much for, for being a part of this. I know uh, we could spend all day with these things. Unfortunately, we have a limited amount of time. Thank you again so much. Thank, thank you very you. much for uh, focusing on this race. All right, and uh, thank you for watching. And please don't forget to vote. Uh, ballots should be arriving in your mailbox at any moment. Stay with us. We'll be right back.